My name is Emily and I live with MS. On a good day, I am walking fine. I can do just about everything I want to do. My dad's doing pretty well. He's still walking, he still works full time. With my new infusion, I am having more better days than bad days. My knees feel good. I can actually feel all 10 of my toes. I haven't had any symptoms or episodes in a long time. I think the rate at which we're finding discoveries in MS is pretty astounding. A generation or two ago, people had no treatment options to turn to, the medications have really changed the course. When Jean was diagnosed, she had been uh, an avid cyclist, uh, biking 40 miles every single morning. People call me Dash. That's my nickname, because how I move rather quickly. Altogether, I served for about 12 years, from 1991 to 2003. Married to the person of my dreams, feeling really stable. And then everything just got ripped out. Within a couple of years of her diagnosis, she was wheelchair bound, and just a few years later, she was uh, bed-bound quadriplegic. The doctors told me they weren't sure if I'd be able to walk without a walker or walk anymore. I couldn't run. It would just mess with me in my mind, like Dash couldn't run. My mom also had MS. I can only hope that um, when it comes to my MS that it does not impact me as much as it did her. You cry because um, you mourn your former self. I'm thinking about my body holding up every day for the rest of my life. And that's, that sucks. That really sucks. But we're resilient. We always have been. All these drugs that we have to slow down the progression of the disease is great, but what I would like to see in my lifetime is an actual cure. We've really come a far away in such a short amount of time. If we continue doing what we're doing, raising more money, supporting more research, we will find a cure. Talk to us, reach out to us, listen, because the only way we can find a cure is with help from everybody. We have to go on offense. We have to change the course of this. And I don't think that's a lot to ask. There's a lot more that we can do. Well, I appreciate everybody's attention, and I want to thank you so much for listening. Thanks for listening. Thank you, thank you guys so much thank for listening. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our first ever virtual Women Against MS luncheon presented by Amerisource Bergen. I am Eric Roberson, and I'm proud to serve as your MC for today's event. This is our 18th anniversary of the Greater Delaware Valley's Women Against MS luncheon. Now, how many of you have been here for 18 years, all 18? If you have, please post in the comment section on YouTube. I heard that we have someone from Scotland. Let's get that YouTube comment section popping. You can also talk about how good I look today. Fine, I'll take it. Um, thank you for your support, support throughout the years. Because of you, the Women Against MS Luncheon has raised more than $2.5 million to create a world free of multiple sclerosis. We are so grateful to each of you for joining us today. So thank you truly for being here. First, we want to make sure that you all know our auction is live and we have some amazing auction items for you, including a trip to Antigua, feel free to bring me with you, a beautiful Lagos jewelry and fitness classes from Bar 3, among others. 
You can make donations and bid on items throughout our, our program by texting WAMS2020, that's W-A-M-S. 2020 to 76278. That's WAMS 2020 with no space or go to WAMS2020.givesmart.com. That's WAMS2020.givesmart.com. We also want to take a moment to acknowledge that although the event feels different this year, the cause is still the same. I know many of you attend this event because you have a connection to MS or you have a connection to one of the wonderful volunteers who leads this event. I have a connection to MS. My amazing wife of 12 years was diagnosed with MS, I believe the year before we got married. We've been together, we've had three kids through all of this um, and all through trials and tribulations, we've decided to give as much as we can to the awareness and the fight to end this horrible disease. So thank you once again for your support and we all support the cause in different ways. As a musician, I can think of no better way to give than by hosting today's event and sharing a bit of my music. So some of you may not know who I am. My name is Eric Roberson once again, and I'm a singer, songwriter, artist, and collector of hats, if you haven't noticed. Um, so I just wanna do a quick song just to kind of warm things up, if that's all right. You may know the song, so feel free to sing along, even though I can't hear you, or just join in in the chat room, like just throw emojis. But uh, here we go, let's do a song real quick. Let's just have some fun. Let's turn some reverb up so I can sound angelic. All right, yeah. Yeah. get easier Ooh, child, things will get brighter Yeah Ooh, child Things are gonna get easier Ooh, child, things will get brighter Yeah Ooh, child Things are gonna get easier Ooh, child, things will get brighter Somebody 
Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am literally about to put a new hat on. Uh, not literally, but figuratively. Anyway, um, so that's what I do. But right now, more important things, because of all of us, we have had our lives affected by MS, and the National MS Society is determined to let nothing, hey, let's get rid of this reverb. I sound like an angel. There we go. Letting nothing, including this unprecedented crisis, slow down the progress and incredible breakthroughs we have helped fund. In fact, people living with MS need us now more than ever. We wanna thank our very special and amazing sponsors for today's events. Our presenting sponsor, Amerisource Bergen. Our medical milestone sponsor, Novataris. Novartis, excuse me. Our platinum sponsors, Independence Blue Cross and Tom and Christine Nerney. Our gold sponsors, Cento Fine Foods, Discover, Diversified Search, Pico, Penn Medicine, The Leader's Edge, Melior Group, Bob and Judy Spires, Terrani, Wasik Consulting, Wells Fargo. And our silver and bronze sponsors, up on our screen. And last but not least, our amazing WAM committee. This event simply could not happen without you. I am now going to ask WAM's co-chair and board of trustees members, Wendy Wasik and Linda McAleer, to tell us more about how MS Society is moving forward no matter what. Thank you all so much for joining us at our first virtual Women Against MS luncheon. I know many of you who have been with us over the past 18 years have seen a lot of different things, but I don't think anyone could have predicted we would be doing this in 2020. But we are here and you are here because people living with MS still need us. The MS Society needs us so it can continue to lead the MS movement, serve people living with MS and drive research forward. While we weren't planning for a pandemic, the MS Society was as ready as it could be. In March, we quickly adapted to meet the urgent needs of the MS community. We focused on finding new ways to deliver the information, support, and connection that people with MS need the most. The MS movement is resilient. And while our world may look different today, and we aren't sure what it will look like tomorrow, our commitment to people affected by MS remains. That's right, Linda. And I'm also very pleased to tell everyone that our MS Navigator service continues to be available for every person affected by MS. In fact, our MS Navigators continue to help people navigate problems and challenges caused by MS and now by the impact of COVID-19, such as employment issues, financial need, emotional support, and access to healthcare resources and treatment. We've also added weekly Ask an MS Expert webinars, bringing together people affected by MS from across the country to get their questions and concerns related to COVID-19 and other topics answered right away. The Society has also created bi-weekly webinars for MS healthcare providers so we can share the latest information on caring for patients during the COVID-19 outbreak. And we are also supporting our self-help group leaders with weekly drop-in calls and the tools and resources they need to connect to their groups virtually so that no one has to face MS alone especially in this time of uncertainty. The MS Society's staff and volunteers are reaching out to elected officials to tell them what people with MS need during the crisis so people like my sister Irene can lead their best lives possible. So as you can hear, we are determined to let nothing, including this unprecedented pandemic, slow us down but we can't do it alone. 
Now more than ever, we need your help. We are so glad that you are joining us today because it will take all of us and many more to achieve a world free of MS. Thank you. Linda and Wendy, thank you so much. And Linda, thank you so much for having the foresight to start this event in 2002. The outcomes for people living with MS are so much better now than they were then. There were only three treatments back then. Now there are more than 19. The progress is due to the commitment of people like you and your co-chairs, including Wendy, Molly Shepard, Judy Spires, and the Vice Chairs, Rhonda Cates, and Christina Wilson, and the entire Women Against MS Committee. Before we move on to our next guest, I want to give you a sneak peek at some of our auction items. All right, take a look at the screen. This is, this is going to be really, really cool, and some of you need to buy some for me. Oh, by the way, we have a hat change. This is the first of many. Let's keep it going. Really cool event. Definitely, I want you guys to donate into this things. I mean, $350 for this amazing painting. There's so many things I want you to touch on. I'm excited. Once again, text WAMS2020 to 76278 or donate and bid on auction items. You still have time. You know, you can even bid on a hat. I, I don't know if MS Society will see that. We can talk to them about it. All right, just please bid. Find different things. Oh, look at that golf excursion for $190. It is uh, really, really cool. And, and hopefully you bring me with you. I would love that. Uh, was that dinner and drinks for four for only $255? You need to do that. You need to do that. Oh, man, there's so many things. Ah, there we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> Make sure you go to Iron Hill for $105. You would have spent way more than that. And my kid's favorite, Wawa. Please drop off a, a, a sizzly once you finish. Uh, the Lagos necklace earrings is for $530. Beautiful, beautiful jewelry, $530. And our trip to Antigua, which you promised to bring me with you, $850. The bid is at $850. Um, you definitely want to do that. You also have the Antigua Pineapple Beach Club bid for $600. Also a logo design for your company uh, for $90. Please bid into these amazing, amazing, amazing things. American Flag PPE, $45. You can get that for $45 right now. Make sure you make your bid. Canvas paintings, I know you have a board wall somewhere. Do, do, do chime in $350 for your canvas painting. Oh, also a Linda Emily painting starting bid at $100. I, where's my phone? I might bid on that myself. Um, really, really cool. People's Light Theater starting at $45. There's so many things, so many things for you to bid into. So definitely, you have time. We want you to definitely bid. And once again, some more golf. I know you guys like to play golf. Apple Cross Golf membership, $200. How about it? Uh, dine at the main line, $140. So we have plenty of things for you to bid on. Bid away, bid away, bid away. We want you to type as much as you can in the YouTube comments, but make sure you use those fingers also to do some bids. Wine and snack basket for $110. So much, all right? So let's keep that going. But right now, it's my awesome pleasure to introduce to you one of the coolest people you are ever going to meet. She's a painter, street artist, muralist, and activist. Her work is seen every day in New York, LA, and Berlin. And on top of it, not only is she hilarious, beautiful and amazing, amazing mother, amazing wife, and amazing painter. She lives with MS. Please join me in welcoming my friend, Lydia, Lydia Emily. Hi, everybody at the National MS Society, all my friends. It's been so long since I've seen you. It's been so long since we've seen anybody. Just for some of you who don't know me, and there's probably a lot, my name is Lydia Emily. I am a fine art oil portraiture painter, and I also am known for doing a couple murals. I've had MS now for the memory of MS says 10 years. I'm progressive. I did uh, 
murals all over the world to try and bring uh, awareness to multiple sclerosis. I'm just going to point this way and I'm going to point this way and I'm going to point this way. And I really do hope that these things come up in every place where I go and I do a mural, whether it be in Portland or in Texas or in Europe. Um, I try and get the community, the MS community to come out and it's amazing. What I do in my studio is I'm a uh, portrait artist. I do oil paintings of uh, faces, faces that I love, faces that I miss. The thing that is uh, hard about it, because I don't have any grip anymore, I try to, I wrap this big, huge elastic band around my wrist and I, uh, magically, a paintbrush will appear in this. Movie magic. Speaking of movie magic, since I'm not on a stage for you guys this year, with beautiful lights and beautiful backgrounds, all supplied by the hard volunteers, the hard working, hard working volunteers, the MS Society, I am filming in my house and you'll never guess who's filming. Um, not only is it hard for me to grip a paintbrush for more than a few minutes, but also because of MS, I've lost the use of my left eye. So what's neat is my husband has a lot of fabricator friends and they make me all these cool patches. Now, you may wonder why I don't wear the patch out a lot. Nobody ever tells you this. Patches make you sweat. Your eyelids sweat. Your eyeball sweats. It's rubbish. So this, I'm not wearing it unless I have to. As you can see from where I am, it's not a dungeon, I swear. This is my husband's office because he makes super awesome costumes for the movie industry. My office, I can't go into. It's covered in dust because I haven't painted anything since the pandemic started. And that is okay. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you today is to let you know that it's okay. It's okay not to do anything. When my kids were born and I tried desperately hard to have them, I didn't paint for four years four years because I wanted to have them. I didn't want to miss a thing. I didn't go to one art show. I didn't produce one painting. And I had all my friends in the art world and writers for art magazines saying, you're missing it all. You're missing, aren't you worried you're missing out on this and that? And let me tell you something. After four years, I went to an art show and every artist was still wearing that same vest, that vest. It was ridiculous. I didn't miss a thing and you're not missing a thing. It's okay to take some time off. So on top of all that, I've taken a big break from social media. For me, social media right now is like if everybody I ever dated and broke up with had my phone number and they could just text me whenever they have a bad thought, asking for money, wanting to know what I'm doing up late at night, learning languages. I don't need to be shamed like that. I periodically go onto social media to see the funny memes that my kids send me, but that's about it. Again, and you'll see that same vest. Everybody will be doing the same thing. If you are turning to social media for support, that's awesome. That's really the best thing it's for. And I totally applaud that. Do you have this feeling like the whole rest of the world is learning how to make bread and learn Mandarin and you're not? It's fine. I'm not learning Mandarin. I've been doing something really crazy, actually. I started watching a show I've never seen before called The Walking Dead. I don't recommend it. One of the things I also was dealing with is my declining health. We all know that uh, as things start to happen, as your legs get weaker, as your memory goes. MS is pretty much exactly how it's described in the brochure when we all bought it. For the first time in my life, I was able to take my family to Europe on art money. Hilarious. One of the things I've really noticed is that, you know, when somebody does that trick for a little kid, when they're walking behind a couch, that's what it's like to have MS legs. I can get up and I can walk to the bathroom just fine. I can get up and I can walk to the kitchen just fine, but I can only stand up long enough to do the dishes. And then everything starts to collapse. So what I really wanted to do with uh, the money that I made last year, which I should be putting into savings, especially since there could be a pandemic coming, I took my family to Europe. My kids had never seen it. My husband had never been there, not been working. And so I wanted to be able to walk around the Louvre with my own legs, with my own feet. I wanted to stand in front of the paintings without any assistance because I knew it was coming. I could feel it coming. And we had the best time. So here's the kicker. When we got back from Europe, the pandemic happened. There's something about the pandemic, right? Part of you thinks, wow, the rest of the world knows what it feels like for us now. They know what it feels like to be sick, to be afraid of getting sicker 
to be okay one day and be worried it's your last. Because us with MS, we've kind of gotten used to that lifestyle, right? I mean, that's kind of who we are. You would think we would be totally better at the pandemic than everyone else, right? I mean, we've been in forever. We quarantined. We did everything we were supposed to do. And I did have this idea that people had a better idea of how we felt. So we're back from Europe and I've quarantined a lot and I um, have prepared myself for the first time to go to the grocery store because, you know, people with MS or somebody who doesn't have MS and might be seeing this video for the first time, we have compromised immune systems. That's what MS is. And to make it uh, even more challenging, some people are on designer MS medication that can actually make you even more compromised, a kind of chemo, if you will, that can be incredibly helpful, but really scary, especially right now. So I've got on my mask and I've got on my goggles and I'm all ready after watching Walking Dead. So we got all geared up and we went to our store and I was uh, happy to be out and felt like I understood the rules of being out now. Uh, especially with my system in the position it's in. And my uh, eldest daughter and I are walking around and we saw an old friend who works there. And, um, and we'd been in the same uh, street art community for, gosh, like two decades. So I was like, oh my God, hi. And I went to approach him as we were putting our stuff in the car. And he said, hey, how's it going? I said, it's going okay. How's it going with you? And he said, fine, except for I have to wear this stupid mask. And I immediately realized, you know, you, you now know you have a good idea of what to walk away from. And I said, oh, okay. And I go to walk away and he says, well, you know, because the, the government and blah, 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 blah. And um, I was like, okay, because I believe in freedom of speech and he should be able to feel however he wants, even if it's totally different from the way that I feel. And I'm certainly not going to get into a fight in a grocery store. I don't have the right haircut to be labeled a Karen, but I can work on it. I really can. So I uh, go to leave and he follows me to my car and, and he says, don't you, uh, I don't want the government to tell me who I can hug and can't hug. And I said, well, maybe the masks um, might help people. Maybe it'll help people from getting sick. And he just looked at me and he said, yeah, I guess I have to wear it for people like you. And that's when I realized we're still different. Even though we have MS and we have this understanding that the rest of the world knows what it's like now to be sick, to be afraid of getting sicker, we're still different. So even though the world has stopped, MS is still going on. So I'm never one to give advice. That would be crazy. It'd be crazier if you took it. But all I have to say is circle the wagons. That's all I'm doing. I'm circling the wagons around my family, around my community, around my MS community. Find your family. Blood has nothing to do with it. I think I've told time and time again, and you've experienced time and time again. Find your family. You're going to be fine. I don't know what I would do right now without communities like the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. They uh, help me in every way. And it's a great resource to reach out. It's a way to find friends and find family that you didn't even know was missing. You don't need to do a 23 and Me. Your family is right here. We understand. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Lydia Emily, for such a funny and powerful story. Uh, and thank you for not letting MS stop you no matter what. Thank you for having me today. It's my pleasure to be here and try and help uh, raise some money for an organization that has helped me and so many people. I need you to wear the Karen wig again before this day is over. Uh, but every day, generous donors like you make an impact on lives like Lydia Emily's. You can make an impact right now. So we need your help today for everyone living with MS. So please take a time to make a donation. The next chapter in our story could be the last chapter for MS. We can be the generation that ends this disease for good. So currently right now, we are at $15,632. How you feel about that, Lydia? I think that that's awesome. And I just want to say that, you know, when you donate to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, you're not just giving to people with MS, 
also helping the caregivers. The caregivers are so important when I'm diagnosed with MS. So does my husband, so do my kids. So this money goes really to help everybody. Yes, and I promise as a caregiver, I will not spend mine on hats. I, I, I'm right there with you. Um, and we have never been this closer to a cure, to understanding how to prevent the disease and to reverse its course, to bring life-changing solutions and treatments to everyone living with MS. It is only possible with you, so let's join together and help create a world free of MS. We thank you, David Braun, uh, for your $25 donation today, and also Nancy Raphael for $150. We are at $16,132. $3,000 from Kathy Baroon. We so appreciate so much of a giving spirit, as well as $2,000 for Anonymous. Uh, uh, so tell me, what do you think of people who would donate money and don't put their name up? How do you feel about them, uh, Lydia? You know what? I think that Nancy and Janice, who I just see, who just gave $50, I think Nancy and Janice should start a bidding war. I mean, there's really not a lot to talk about during quarantine. Just imagine if that was your Facebook headline for the day. I got into a bidding war for charity. You'd have so much to talk about, and I totally dare you to do it. What do you think? I'm totally with. I think Nancy jumped in again. So, so I'm, 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 I'm here for it. I'm here for the battle. I'm here for the competition, all the way. Now you should receive a text from Give Smart just now with the link to our donation page. And when you give, now your name will appear on the screen with all of our MS champions. The first 40 to donate uh, today will even receive a beautiful orange face mask, homemade, handmade by our very own committee member Marcy Dwyer and friend Gail Lynch. So, I, you know, I, I could use, I think I have an orange hat somewhere up here. I'm sure you have an, an orange bandana. What color of face mask do you usually wear, uh, Lydia, when you're going out? So we have um, these face masks that have anime um, images on them because my kids are really into anime. And I just wanted Very to cool. say that when you're at the page, you're going to see a print that I donated. Now, this print is really special because it's the first painting that I did that really depicts what uh, it feels like for me to have multiple sclerosis. The painting itself will be hanging in Annenberg House in uh, Santa Monica, California. And I made some prints of it and the prints aren't even for sale yet. Tell my manager that I gave you one. So this print for auction today isn't even available to the public yet and i've only made 25 of them they're all numbered and signed archival prints so chat out because um i think you might like it i really think you will like it too and that item is 313 the auction item for lydia emily's painting is item 313 so definitely go ahead thank you anonymous uh for bidding at a hundred dollars also kathleen nelson who's bid 500 i think kathleen wants to jump in the bidding war she says what's up nancy what what you got um <laughs> diane man we so appreciate it uh so let's keep this up we're at sixteen thousand nine hundred and eighty two dollars um, we also have uh, amazing donors, Rhonda and Tom, who will match up to uh, $10,000 uh, $10, today. We're at 17. Look at that. I looked down for one quick second, and we're already at seventeen, um, seventeen thousand two hundred and thirty-two dollars how, how do you feel about where it's growing? Is it growing uh, at the speed you like, uh, Lydia? It's amazing. I wish I could, I wish I could, because I only have the one eye, I wish I could look at you and at the numbers at the same time. So I'm kind of getting this live feed from you and to hear them go up so So, so much everybody. I hope you know you can donate on the website too. This is really incredible. Definitely text WAMS2020 to 76278 or visit, like Lydia said, uh, www.wams2020.givesmart.com. 
Okay. So uh, please, once again, uh, you can leave a comment and tell us who in your life has inspired you to uh, join in today and to support uh, the vital research programs, the search and the advocacy for people living with MS. So now let's have uh, Rhonda and Tom. Rhonda Cates and Tom Clifford have pledged to match every gift made here today up to $10,000. So we thank you, Rhonda and Tom. Let's have Rhonda and Tom join us to share their reason for giving today. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us at the Women and Men Against MS event. I'm Rhonda Cates. And I am Tom Clifford. And together, Rhonda and I have been supporting the MS Society for many years through donations of time, treasure, and talent. Tom's late wife, Beth, was diagnosed with MS at the age of 29. Medications helped her lead an extraordinary life with a successful career. The first wave of MS drugs, interferons, were available at that time. Beth took all of these drugs available depending upon the stage of her disease. Unfortunately, she entered a secondary progressive stage before any of the newest generation of disease-modifying drugs were available. These newer drugs help reverse or prevent progression of the disease. The old drugs that kept Beth ambulatory for 25 years, as well as the new drugs were possible thanks to the financial support of the MS Society to research institutes around the world. In 2019, over 40 million was spent by the MS Society on research. Those research dollars are available only because of contributions from generous donors such as you. One way that we honor Beth's memory is through monetary support to the society. Another is to donate our time. I am a trustee on the board and volunteer to be a vice chair for this event. Although Beth did not need many of the services that the MS Society offers today, she was a beneficiary of the medical research and we know that she would want that to continue today. Today we are offering everyone an opportunity to double any donation they make. We are offering an appeal match of $10,000. What this means is we will match up to $10,000 in gifts during today's event and encourage everyone to donate now to double their gift. A donation of any amount is important and vital to us finally having a world free of MS. Thank you in advance for your contribution and supporting the MS Society. Thank you so much, Rhonda and Tom, for your inspiring gift and generosity for this afternoon. It is your generosity of people like you that give people like me hope. So much has been accomplished, but we have to keep pushing forward. We haven't figured out how to repair the damage to a nervous system caused by MS. We haven't figured out a way to prevent MS from happening. And most importantly, we still haven't found a cure. Lydia, why is supporting the MS Society so important to you? Oh my God, a myriad of reasons. And I would like that I've been watching the donor feed as um, videos have been playing and I see, um, you know, donations of $10. That is so amazing. It's not only uh, amazing in a regular time, like in the regular world, but now that we're on this new plateau and people have lost their jobs and they're struggling for someone to be able to give $10, it is so huge and so appreciated. So I really wanted to take the time to applaud people who are giving what they can. Uh, it means everything to people like me. Thank you so much. I could not agree more. Um, we are right now pushing for the appeal. Right now we're at $18,371. Um, right. And we are also trying to get our overall appeal for this luncheon. Our goal is $225,000 we are trying to raise. So thank you for every single penny, dime, nickel, dollar, $10 that you are donating. Um, it all adds up. Thank you, uh, Jennifer Murphy, for your donation. $2,000 just came in uh, anonymous as well. We're at 18,371. Lydia, I wanna go back to another point that's just so amazing about you. You paint so well and so many beautiful things. You tie a tool around your hand so that you can hold a paintbrush for a, a long time. How long, how, when did you figure out how to use that technique? Um, well, uh, I was painting and I was doing, um, I was, sometimes I paint in a studio um, and sometimes I paint um, on a wall. So I was outdoors and um, I was losing my grip and there was no device around to help. 
you know, when you're painting on the street or you're doing a mural, you kind of, you know, just take whatever you have access to. So I faces from one of my kids' shoes. They had these pink sparkly shoelaces because they were little then. They're all grown up now. But then I tied it around my hand. And then after that, and it really worked, it took the pressure off of it. And then I realized that a lot better. So I ended up taking bra straps, you know those removable bra straps? You know, I want to keep it clean here uh, on YouTube, but there are these removable bra straps that some women have. And I tied that around and it holds it in place perfectly. And it really makes it so that I can continue to work. I mean, life is all about finding little hacks so that we can go on either adapt or we die. So our, that was our how I... Yeah. I love it. Our community is so resilient and I just applaud you. The paintings are absolutely amazing. And to think about what you have to do to add to the dedication of what you're doing, I'm really, really impressed by it. We just had a $1,500 donation. Yeah, hey, you you deserve it. You deserve it. A $1,500 donation that actually pushed us over 20,000. We are trying to get to $25,000 here in this appeal. Once again, our overall push for the, for the luncheon uh, is to get to $2,000. Uh, two thousand twenty-five hundred, two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. We are working towards that. Thank you, Sherry Cole, uh, for your hundred dollars as well. Remember, you are making an investment that could go towards funding the next big scientific breakthrough. Funding from the National MS Society led to the discovery of every effective treatment for MS. So you can help fund the next treatment, okay? Uh, Deborah, $100, we are, we, are, we are still growing. We're still growing. We're at $20,805. The MS Society is here to support all people affected with MS, including the loved ones of people living with the disease. The society has educational resources specifically uh, for care partners and can connect them with other people facing the same challenges. In addition, we can help people access counseling services and respite care with gives care uh, partners a break and gives them time to take care of themselves. I understand that you've been married and your, your husband has been a caregiver and it's a very important cause to you as well. Uh, what do you want to say on behalf of your husband why people should give? Oh my, are you asking for that because you know he's listening someplace? Uh, hey, I got to speak for my fellas. Hey, why not? Oh, I don't know if you might, might have just heard him laughing. More importantly than my husband, let's discuss the YouTube comments where people are saying, good job, Lydia Emily. So nice to see you, Lydia Emily. Um, very, very happy to see you all. I miss you guys all so much. And yes, respite care is incredibly important. He have to, my husband has to work and take care of me and, and the kids and the animals. All the things that you used to do as a couple or a team are now all put on one person. So your donations go to that person too. Caregivers, so important. I thank you so much. I thank you for your husband's, husband's support as well. Once again, Lydia Emily's painting is uh, item number 313, 313. Yeah. Definitely get this beautiful, beautiful print. Uh, also, once again, we're trying to raise our appeal to get to $225,000 for the luncheon. We're trying to get to 25 on our appeal, 25,000. Thank you, Judy, for $250. So uh, $225,000 we are trying to raise for this luncheon. $2,500 funds one week of a multi-year research project trying to uncover the next MS breakthrough. $1,000 makes a vehicle more accessible to help people with MS maintain their driving independence. That's very, very important. $500 provides up to six months of in-person counseling services to someone living with MS such an important service more than half of all people living with ms have disease related depression 250 dollars provide 
dedicated support from MS Navigator to address their unique MS needs. And ladies and gentlemen, we have just gotten to $25,720. I know that $1,500 was on just uh, Lydia Emily's painting right there. I'm sure. Once again, 313. How do you feel about reaching 25000 Lydia? How do you feel about it? I love it. I just want to say that there are other things people are donating to that they might not even think about. So when I travel around the country, which will, and we would meet people. I would speak and other people would have speakers and like you would be a speaker people and people would come from all around. Sometimes if they had never even to an event before um, and they just heard of it or someone else brought them, these events that the MS Society puts on connect people. Everybody starts becoming friends, phone numbers are exchanged. I have met thousands. They are amazing. And when you donate, you're donating to that too. I so appreciate that. If you haven't noticed, Lydia is enormously dedicated to this, as well as Rhonda and Thomas, who also have matched our donations and added in $10,000 to bring our appeal total to $35,920. I am blown away. Now, all I need is for Tom to donate, donate that orange tie to me. I, I need it to match my orange face mask. Um, we're having a great time. We are raising money for a great cause. Thank you for your generous support. People with MS need us more than ever, and you are making the next breakthrough possible. I am very lucky to be with so many inspirational leaders, but there is one who stands out from the rest. And that is today's Woman of Spirit honoree, Gina Clark. Before I ask two former recipients of this award, Molly Shepard and Judy Spires, to come up here and present the award, let's learn a little more about our woman of spirit. Gina Clark is amazing. Gina is one of the most compassionate and caring people that I know. Gina is amazingly energetic, positive, a great person. Gina Clark is uh, fierce. Gina Clark uh, makes me proud to call her my mom. She didn't grow up in, in a privileged, wealthy household, but her family, her her parents, her brothers have always been the kind to help others wherever they can and whenever they can. So I think that was ingrained in her at a very young age, and it became important to her um, as we were growing up to have those same values. Gina is incredibly generous with her time. She's um, brings a great deal of passion to everything that she does, and she has a really unique ability to connect with people, to understand what they need and what they need to hear. Um, and that, from in my mind, comes from just a very generous spirit and, and approach to, to how she thinks about others in the world. In the Jewish religion, there's a term called Eshet Chayel, which means a woman of valor. And, you know, of course, Gina's uh, grew up in the South, and she, she's Baptist, but Gina truly embodies Eshet um, Chayel, and also a woman of spirit, somebody who cares about the right things, who cares about people, who cares about society. I think uh, she deserves this recognition. She is so often about getting recognition to others. So, you know, to see her be recognized in her individual name is, is so well deserved. Gina has a spirit, or I would say an aura about her that is obvious as soon as you meet her. She genuinely cares about people. She's probably one of the most caring people that I have, have ever met. I think, you know, an award that really focuses on care is one that is completely appropriate for her because the bottom line is Gina does care. She cares. She really is a dedicated and caring and compassionate leader. And um, that shines through in the impact she's made through her career and her life. The impact that Gina has had for me uh, in my career is really just as a, uh, as, as a friend and as a mentor. So Gina is somebody that you can, uh, you can talk to, you, you know, you're going to get straight uh, advice uh, from her. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's good. It's good advice. So uh, if you're smart, you'll, you'll listen. And uh, I've had the good fortune of, uh, of doing that with Gina over uh, a long period of time. And uh, it's been a, it's been a real pleasure. She is empathetic and compassionate to everyone she interacts with. And I think those are traits 
that you don't see in everyone. And I would also say she uses an extraordinary amount of, what's the word? She uses all these Southern phrases <laughs> that make her very unique. I love them. I think uh, one thing that makes Gina really unique is her, her instincts and her intuition. Um, I really think it's a superpower, right? She has such good intuition about business, uh, about people. The thing that really set Gina apart when I stepped into my role, it was just so clear that she didn't just want to make herself successful. She wanted to make everyone around her successful and make the company successful. The scope of influence that she has does not stop with the people that report to her, but that as I think through my organization, that I see a, a group of men and women who aspire to lead like Gina Clark does by lifting others around them and, and really fighting for large scale, meaningful change and effort. My mom knows how to make people feel special. When you are speaking with her, when she is focused on you, she is 100% focused on the person she's speaking to. And she really knows how to listen intently to that person. And she always offers really good advice. Um, she's almost always right, and she'll love that I said that. Um, but it's, it's actually true. She has a ton of experience, and she has really good advice as a result of her life experiences. My mom works fearlessly, um, and, and she, she approaches things in both her professional life, as I've seen them, and in her personal life fearlessly. She supported me through a number of difficult periods in my life when I've been quite ill and, you know, on top of her work and on top of her, her, her philanthropic work, she, she had to take care of me for, for a, uh, a stint as well. She's always been a real role model for me and how I want to approach the world. Thank you for your pioneering spirit. Thank you for your commitment to the community. For your commitment to the community. Thank you for being a leader. Thank you for all that you do. You are inspiring to everyone around you. You are an advocate. You are purpose-driven, passionate, and amazing. Thank you, an Thank you for being a wonderful colleague. Thank you for your passion and your spirit. I am proud to call you an inspiration. An inspiration. I'm proud to call you a colleague and a friend. Congratulations. 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 To be honored by the MS Society. In the fight against multiple sclerosis. On the Woman of Spirit Award. Well deserved, Gina. Well deserved, Gina. Well deserved, Mom. Well deserved. You are the greatest mom I could ever imagine. That was wonderful. So what does it mean to be a woman of spirit? For one thing, you need to be brave and you need to be confident. Qualities Gina definitely showed when she moved to Philadelphia a decade ago. And for those of you who haven't picked up on the accent, she's not from around these parts. However, Gina used her Southern charm to quickly make herself a part of the Philadelphia business community, which is no easy task, as anyone moving to our city will tell you. Gina made it a priority because she knew it was the right thing for her as a leader and that it was the right thing for Amerisaurus Bergen. Gina came to Philadelphia as the Chief Marketing Officer of Amerisaurus Bergen at a time when the organization was going through a remarkable period of growth. But growth, especially through acquisition, means change. Some of us are better at leading through change than others, though the pandemic has probably taught us all some very valuable lessons. For Gina, it's second nature she was able to present and begin to execute a vision for a unified company, a united community, not a disparate collection of separate entities. And Gina wasn't just doing it because she wanted to get her way. With her, it's not about winning or losing. It's not about ego. It's about doing what is right. Gina is purpose-driven and the Amerisaurus Bergen purpose of creating healthier futures is something she strongly believes in. 
is a quality that has allowed her to be so successful, both at the company and through its foundation, which she became president of in 2016. In this role, Gina has been able to take the opiate crisis head on. Last year, the foundation provided more than 1 million drug deactivation kits to organizations in every single state. We should also note that Amerisource Bergen was selected by Newsweek as one of America's most responsible companies in 2019 for its commitment to environmental and social responsibility under Gina's leadership. As Mary Stangle Austin of Tierney, another former woman of spirit, by the way, told us, Gina is committed to leaning in and by being who she is, she encourages everyone else around her to do the same. Over the years, she has been involved in many causes, including the American Cancer Society, CEOs Against Cancer, the National Heart Association, and of course, the National MS Society. But the one nonprofit where she perhaps had the greatest impact is the Aluna Network, which was formerly the Moyer Foundation. Aluna, which is committed to helping children and families impacted by grief and addiction, was going through a period of change when Gina joined its board. And change, as you heard earlier, is her specialty. Mary Fitzgerald, Aluna's executive director, says she was so pleased to have Gina join the board and appreciative of Gina's forthright and honest nature when Gina told her, just warning you, I won't always be this quiet. I'm learning. That thoughtfulness, that ability to listen is what makes Gina such a unique leader, unique in the sense that she is a leader in partnership. The ability of Gina to influence the behavior of others is something many people talk about. She is honest and straightforward in her approach. She doesn't pretend to be good at everything, you know, cooking, numbers, that kind of thing, which allows people around her to be more genuine about their own strengths and weaknesses. It was Rob Cathal of Navigate, a consulting firm, who told us that Gina is the embodiment of the adage, know thyself. She knows what she's really good at, and what she's not good at. And she is totally okay with you knowing that too. This year has been difficult for all of us, but it's been especially hard on Gina. You see, she has quite the idea for eye for fashion and Zoom just doesn't do justice to her lovely outfits and accessories. Also, the pandemic has meant that there have been no late night karaoke parties but hopefully the pandemic will cooperate just enough to allow her to host her annual Oscar event where guests are encouraged to come as their favorite Hollywood stars. On the other hand, we know for Gina that having her two children, Sarah and Jason, home during the pandemic has been an absolute blessing. And it was great to be able to see them in the video. As successful as Gina is, and as important as her work is, family comes first. And in that, there is a lesson for all of us, both beyond the crisis and during. Gina, it is our great pleasure to present you with the 2020 Woman of Spirit Award. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so very much, Judy and Molly. Uh, I am so honored to be the Woman of Spirit for 2020. And thank you to my friends and my colleagues, and most especially my children, Sarah and Jason, for your words. That video was amazing. Thank goodness I had a few minutes to collect myself. Um, not sure I've completely done that yet. Um, and apparently somebody's told a lot of stories about me to, to Molly and Judy. Um, yes, I don't cook. And yes, I do love karaoke and Oscar parties. So um, it, is, it is just a pleasure to be here and to be a part of this event. Um, I am especially honored and humbled to receive this award in these days following the death of my personal hero and an American hero and icon, Chief Justice Ruth 
Prosecutor Ginsburg. Chief Justice Ginsburg was the personification of a woman of spirit. I am confident that in the years to come, her spirit and her impact will be felt to even a greater degree than we realize today. I aspire to live a life even a fraction, with even a fraction of the commitment to others that she demonstrated every day. As I prepared for today, I asked Kevin to tell me um, about the origins of this event. And you heard earlier during our event today that Linda McClear founded this 18 years ago. And Linda wanted and envisioned an award that reflected both accomplishments and also attitude. So caring, giving, and living became the basis of this opportunity. The many honorees that came before me um, that you've heard about from even today um, exemplified all of those attributes. And it is with great humility, but also with enthusiasm that I accept this today. I also want to thank my company, Amerisource Bergen, for sponsoring this event. Uh, so many of my colleagues were on the video. Thank you all so much for doing that. ABC has been a committed partner uh, for the MS Society for a number of years. Our company and our associates are guided by our purpose statement. We are united in our responsibility to create healthier futures. That healthy future is deserved by everyone. And fighting this disease of MS with vigor and commitment is a straight path to those healthier futures. Throughout my life, I have seen up close the impact of MS on friends, family, and loved ones. My high school friend, Susan, diagnosed at the young age of 20. My business mentor, Tony, who continued to guide and lead many of us throughout the course of his life and the disease. My colleagues, Jean and Ashley, working side by side, and in one case, I never knew they had MS and, until they told us many years later. My daughter's close friends, some of whom have just been diagnosed, Krista and Carolyn. These people are fighting the good fight. They are survivors and they will continue to fight on. Today, we're here to stand with them and for them. We are an event named Women Against MS. So let's talk about that. Empowering women to lead in this fight and achieve these healthier futures for others and themselves is especially important to all of us gathered here. To the men in our audience, thank you for being here. You all know how much I appreciate you and I value your, your support and others and, and all of what you have done to be a part of this event. To the women in our audience, I hope we will all dig deeper into the reservoir of intellect energy and passion that we have for the health of others and make a difference in their lives every day. We are always stronger together. Our power and ability to improve lives, improve the health, and, and cure the many ills of our society, whether they be physical or otherwise, lie in our collective strength and commitment. I will not forget how you've honored me here today. I will not forget how Amerisource Bergen has supported me and the MS Society today. I will use this experience to motivate myself and those in my circle of influence to work hard each and every day to make an impact, make an impact, and work on behalf of those who deserve a healthier future. Thank you. God bless each of you, and I wish you a happy and healthy life. Congratulations, Gina. It sounds like we all could learn something from you about leaders. And we need good leaders right now. So thank you so very much. So let's go and see where our donations are at now. On behalf of the National MS Society, thank you to our committee, all our sponsors today, and all of you for your support. Uh, just our appeal alone has raised $36,995. The movement would not be possible without your commitment. And if you have not gotten a chance to bid on auction items, don't worry, it's time. You have time. The auction will remain open until Friday at 5 p.m. Thank you, Jennifer, for $25. I do see it. Um, so definitely, you have time. The auction will remain open. And you can make sure to check it out at whams2020.givesmart.com. 
dot com whams 2020 dot give smart dot com i hope you all have taken something away from this event and feel inspired to spread the message of our movement to those you love and to your communities we want you to continue to give make sure you text whams 2020 to 76278 to donate now that's w-a-m-s 2020 to 76278 to donate now. Uh, as we think about all that we accomplished in the last several decades, I look forward to thinking of all we accomplish next. The next chapter in our story could be the last chapter for MS. We could be the generation that ends the disease and changes life for millions of people. I know that's what I want for my beautiful wife, Sean, and I know that's what Lydia Emily wants too. So once again, thank you for everyone who donated. Jasmine, I see $25 coming in. I so appreciate everybody and do continue to donate. We'll be open till Friday, 5 p.m. Once again, text WAMS2020 to 762778 to donate or bid on an auction item now. My name is Eric Robeson. I've been your host this afternoon. It has been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Please stay safe. And we wish you well for the rest of this year and look forward to seeing you next year and just hope that we can be together in person to celebrate our success in 2021. God bless. Thank you very much.